Hello, welcome to the Myths and Truths about Cervical Cancer Prevention. My name is Karen and I work for the Eve Appeal, the UK's leading gynae cancer research charity. And I'm joined again for the third time lucky with Adiola Olaitan, gynaecologist, Wonder Woman and trustee of the Eve Appeal. In this video we're going to be talking about HPV and um, you'll find out why knowing about it is so important when coming to prevent cervical cancer. So Adiola, what is HPV? What does it stand for and what is it? So HPV stands for the human papillomavirus. It's a family of viruses, terribly common, same type of virus that causes the warts on your fingers and the verrucas on your feet. But there are about 20 types that infect the genital tract the vagina, the vulva, and the cervix. Now, broadly speaking, we classify HPV, genital HPV, as low risk or high risk. Low risk HPV causes visible warts. It does not directly increase the risk of cancer. High risk HPV causes no visible lesions, so you can't see it, you can't tell that you've got it. It infects the cervix, and infection with HPV can increase the risk of cancer. How do you get HPV? How do you, like, how does it pass on? Genital HPV is transmitted through sexual contact, but it doesn't need penetrative sex. Skin to skin contact can give yeah. you HPV infection. So, a question that's come in about HPV, because I think there's a lot of stigma that surrounds it because it's passed on through sexual contact and therefore people like to make certain assumptions about people's lifestyles and so on. Um, does promiscuity increase the risk of HPV uh, or cancer from HPV? And if so, why and how? So HPV is terribly common. Four out of five people will get it in their lives. So it really is it's common. Really common. Yeah. It's as common as catching a cold. So there mm. should be no stigma attached to it. Somebody's come in with a, maybe a myth, you're going to tell us. Uh, it's an STI that only people who've had very unsafe sex get. Well, I don't I know what very unsafe well, sex is. is. Exactly, exactly. What are you exactly. doing? <laughs> but I think that the conversation we had earlier implies that it isn't. Skin to skin contact will transmit it. You and what is skin to skin contact? So if it, but essentially, any type, of, so any type of sex, oral, vaginal, anal, or just close contact of the genitalia mm -hmm. without any sort of penetration. Yep. And um, so most people mm. have who done are sexually something. active. Yes. And you only need one partner mm -hmm. to be exposed to HPV. Do I need to tell my partner if I have HPV? Um, I've definitely had these conversations with people uh, through the service we run at the Eve Appeal that um, people phone up and say, I may, I've got HPV, what do I do? Do I, I've got a boyfriend? What does this mean? Does someone need to kind of confess if they've got it? You're right, it's an interesting question. It comes up all the time. The answer is there is no need because we can't treat it in men. He may already have his own HPV. He may already be immune. And we can't contact trace. It's not like other sexually transmitted infections where you can find out where, you know, who's been infected. Mm. So you can't go through your little black book yeah. phoning everyone. Absolutely not. And actually, it doesn't matter. As yeah. Most healthy young people, especially men, it'll just pass through them without causing any difficulty at all. I have HPV, but have only ever slept with one person, which you just explained was possible. Does this mean that my partner has cheated on me? No, it doesn't. Um, so he could have had HPV f from a long time ago. The person who's written in may have had HPV from skin-to-skin -skin contact from mm -hmm. somebody else without necessarily having penetrative intercourse. You just can't tell where it's come from. It doesn't imply promiscuity. It doesn't imply cheating. Somebody's asked, is cervical cancer only caused by the HPV virus? 99.7% of cervical cancers are caused by HPV, so I guess the short answer is yes. Yeah. I've had genital warts, does this mean I'm going to get cervical cancer? No, because the virus that causes genital warts is different from the virus that puts women at risk of cervical cancer. Someone said HPV 18, so a type of HPV, means that you will get cervical cancer. Is that true? No. 
So HPV 16 and 18 are the commonest high-risk viruses in this country, and they account for about 70% of the cervical cancers that we see. However, most people with HPV 16 or 18, as I said, will clear it themselves. Mm -hmm. It does increase your risk of getting cancer, and the most important thing you can do is go and get screened regularly. And somebody's asked, how many different types are there? Can I get more than one type at once? Will it go away? Is it kind of, can you end up with sort of five different strands and two high-risk strands at the same time? And then you're doubly as likely to get cervical cancer? So you can be infected with more than one type of HPV. There are about 30 types that infect the genital tract. Um, But the fact that you're infected with two doesn't double your risk of getting cervical cancer. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this HPV video and we'll be back with some more information about cervical cancer prevention. Thank you again, Diola. Thank you.